All right, guys, welcome to another edition of the Outfast Podcast. Um, I'm your host, Greg Simpson, with my partner, Jeremy Cloder. Today, we have an awesome guest on the show, Trish Lido, not what? Leto. <laughs> and obviously, we have producer in the house, Jeremy Griffin, over here at Startup Street. And so uh, today, we have Trish here, and Trish is going to talk to us a lot about Facebook Lives and how powerful they are for your brand, your business. So Trish, thanks for coming on today. Oh Love my it. God, thanks for having me, guys. I'm excited to be here today. Like this is like an all-star cast today. Oh yeah, like, the pod shop's no joke. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, what's going on? Talk to me. Yeah, we, you know, I think this is such a huge value add for so many people out there um, because this is one of those topics that people are super confused about and why going on Facebook Live is like the greatest free marketing tool out there. Um, so Trish, talk, talk to a little bit about what you guys, what you do over at Five Minute Lives. So yeah, so um, I, I trademarked Five Minute Lives because like you said, too many people are significantly underusing live video in general, whether it's Facebook Live, mm -hmm. link, or, yeah, um, Instagram Live, YouTube Live. I love Facebook because Facebook Lives are actually, the content on Facebook Live are consumed more than seven times more than any other posted content on social media. So, yeah. and it's free, <laughs> it's free. Yeah. So. I put together a structured methodology called five minute lives, teaching business owners, business professionals, all sorts of different entrepreneurs, how to use just five minutes of live video to brand themselves, get their content out there, connect with their audience, build a no like, and trust, do it over and over, rinse and repeat, repurpose it. And I've got clients who five X their income in their first five minute live other clients who within two weeks, 13, 14 X their income. So it's, it's, it's just, it's nuts. Like it's, it's an, and it's a lot of fun. So it's important. I think too many people lack confidence to use live video, Bingo. but it's raw, mm -hmm. it's real. And that's what we want to start consuming more of is, is like the, the real of everybody. Absolutely. That's why my, honestly, my handle is at real Greg Simpson for everything because I like to keep it real, transparent, no bullshit. And that's why I love going on Facebook live is that if you have people ask you a question on Facebook live and you don't know the answer, you're going to like a freaking idiot. So <laughs> Um, That's and, true. And I've helped build my br my brand, and it's helped us with Outfa Out Outfast Realty to a fine buyer, sellers, all sorts of stuff. So, right on. Um, I think what what I think is great is even though most of our stuff is kind of real estate related, the the Facebook Live is crucial for any type of business owner. So how do you? So when people sometimes people think what they do is not interesting enough, but it's always interesting to somebody else that doesn't know their industry. So talk us through maybe someone that came to you that's like, you know, I don't really think I have something interesting that somebody would be, you know, interested in learning more about and how they can produce content for that and just kind of explain what they do on a daily basis. But someone's going to have an interest. But do you have a, maybe a story that you could share with someone that's kind of overcome that obstacle within themselves? So, um, so my, myself, well, I'm one of those people, right? So I, I'll start with me because I think that the bigger issue that people are, are, are facing is, oh, well, you know, people aren't going to be interested in what I do for a living, but content is who we are too and that's how it all starts out we have to brand ourselves mm -hmm. so people want to work with people right yep. people mm -hmm. don't even with amazon right if you go on amazon why do you buy a thing mostly because it's got a five star rating yep. and that five star you. rating mm -hmm. is a review from a person mm -hmm. who's already experienced that thing so i think that what more people need to understand is people want to hear from who you are right so when i go live i tell people hey i'm a u.s navy veteran i was a helicopter mechanic in the navy i've got two little kids life is hard you know i hashtag i mom so hard you know i, like, I like to one. use that one a lot too yeah, and i do i do i don't care i'll overuse it too i don't care but it but it but like that's but people resonate with me with that right so so people connect with me as a person mm -hmm. and then when when they're like well what do you do i'm like oh i help people increase revenue with live video marketing tell me more about that mm -hmm. right right so to to your to your yes it, it's worked for me and it works with my clients too because when they go live and they start sharing and who they are as a person and then they kind of start talking about their story mm -hmm. that storytelling piece every time you're going to bring mm -hmm. people into your world and i think some people talk about b2c or b2b like oh well i only deal with other businesses it's still at the end of the day it's human to human interaction Absolutely. so whether absolutely. you're b2b to, b2 really or b2b point. it's like you still it's still humans at the end of the day it is it absolutely mm -hmm. is i mean people reach out to me like hey tell me a little bit about yourself not hey so what do you do and how do i hire you i mean yeah that happens but that happens after i do a live video where i'm standing next to my whiteboard and i'm breaking down how live video can increase your revenue mm -hmm. and they're like oh 
oh, that's how it works. Yeah. So there's content for you right there, guys. Right. Go live and educate people on how it works, and they will want to work with you. Bingo. <laughs> right. So on Jeremy's topic or question, I guess I should say, what's the most boring client that you have that's still successful? No, no I'm dead serious. Because no. I'm, what, oh, my God. I'm so excited about this Or question. what kind of business? I should say client because you're not your client's not boring. But what kind of like business is like that what could be considered a boring client or a business that – has thrived with you. So literally two days ago, I had a client of mine. He did his very first five minute live mm -hmm. and he reached out to me. He's like, Trish, he goes, I sold five of my courses. You know, <laughs> you know what he does? He's an insurance guy. He oh, does financial me. planning and insurance. Brutal. He did that. And then directly after that, he reached out to a collaborative partner and said, hey, let me interview you. Mm -hmm. He's like, Trish, overnight I woke up and I had over 200 views on that video. Mm -hmm. okay. Over 200 views for what's otherwise considered, oh, but my business is boring. Right. So that's sweet. <laughs> if you if you if you if you tell yourself you're boring, you're going to be boring. Mm -hmm. If you have that mindset set shift and say, hmm, I could really use some free leads into my business, mm -hmm. then go use live video and explain what you do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Done. Absolutely. Like done. It doesn't have to be complicated. Yeah, and it doesn't get much more boring than insurance. So. <laughs> exactly. No offense to your client, but no, it's boring. It's true. <laughs> my, it's, my, my, I can, it's true. And I can say that because my stepfather has been an insurance salesman his whole life, it feels, or my whole life, I feel like. So, sorry, so you're Dave. You're related to it, so you can slam the industry. I can't, right? a little you're bit. You're entitled to that. There you go. <laughs> Nothing, it's not as sexy as a demo day over at uh, right? one of our flips, so. <laughs> There's been, um, sometimes I've, I've listened to people that feel like they're, industry or what they do there's a lot of restrictions about about going out and mm -hmm. being able to say what they do or you know you know being very careful about how they do certain things or certain things they re can recommend mm -hmm. um how do how would you kind of approach that on helping them still brand themselves and maybe not getting super technical on some of the things that or restrictions they might have from their employer things like that 100 percent. there's there's a lot of compliance regulations out there right like we're, we're we got a lot we get a lot of like slaps on the wrist for a lot of different things and that's again why i tell people to brand themselves first so if, you, if you're a financial planner nine times out of ten there's a reason why you became a financial planner right mm -hmm. you're somebody who believes in money and believes in protecting your money is it is it against compliance for, to to do a Facebook Live and go? So here's why I decided to become a financial planner, mm -hmm. because I think that in the economy that we live in, people are scared to invest money, and I want to help you protect your assets. Right? You work hard for that. Why? How is that hard mm -hmm. to do? I mean, literally. And you tell the backstory. Like I remember, I was 16 years old, and my father had a restaurant, and he came home one night. And he lost his bank deposit envelope that had over $3,000 cash. And I listened to my dad cry himself to sleep that night. Oof. I'm getting choked up just talking about it. Oh. <clears throat> so, but it's, but that's, that's important. And that's emotion, right? That's, that so, stuff happens here, Trish. I'm just you saying. Know, we bring it, it, it out of you. It, <laughs> I, I have no problem talking about it because I think this is an important reason why I do what I do now. Why mm -hmm. I hustle so hard, right? That's a story that people are going to resonate with. Mm -hmm. So maybe... If you're a financial planner, we hop on a Facebook Live together. I interview you, and I tell you, hey, this is why I think what you do is important. Boom. It's okay. I cried on one of them. <laughs> yeah. No, Greg, 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 Greg's, Greg's right there with you. Legit? Yeah. Legit? <laughs> Legit. Oh, High yeah. five for the tears, buddy. I like it. I like it. Look, Keep it tears real. are real. Keep it real. Tears <laughs> are real. Yeah. Uh, I don't think we've published that one yet, so. <laughs> no, we haven't. <laughs> to be determined. <laughs> And I like, so talk about that feature that you said about the interviewing, um, people being able to kind of capitalize on that as well and not just have to be a video of them talking and how they can maybe almost do what we're doing here within their sphere of influence, strategic partners and stuff that collaborate in similar industries or industry that is complementary to theirs where they can help kind of brand each other or, you know, create a little bit more content that might be more interesting than just them trying to hop on themselves. So that's quite literally how I started building my brand. I didn't know enough about marketing. Mm -hmm. And instead of trying to learn like 5,000 different things and spend a gazillion dollars on courses, I reached out to people just like you, right? You know, you've been doing this for a long time. You know what you're talking about. So I started reaching out to people like all of you and said, hey, um, I I'm, I'm really want to use this Facebook Live thing, but I'm nervous about being live by myself. 
what do you say we hop on an interview together and we just like have a good time, right? So I started doing that and it became the Expert Connection Facebook show, right? And now I'm okay. on iTunes, right? Mm -hmm. So I interviewed over a hundred industry experts where it was other marketers, collaborative partners, real estate agents, loan officers, all sorts of different people. And I brought them on Facebook Live and I'm like, let's do this. And you could do it via Zoom. Mm -hmm. You could do it via Facebook on your phone. You could use Be Live. There's yeah, all sorts Live's of different. Be Live is pretty cool. Right? And there's all sorts of different ways to do that. And now you've got that, that's a digital asset for you. Mm -hmm. Right. So you can be the person who you're like, you're the curator. You're the one you're now you're the, you're the hero in your community. You're like, Oh snap. Somebody wants to interview me. Mm -hmm. Right. And now you're like, and so one of my, one of my clients does, that. he's a loan officer here in Tampa Bay area. He's going and do insurance companies. Like he's walking in and doing Facebook lives with them. <laughs> And they love him. No, of course, for it. That's they're giving awesome. him free money. It's I love that. Are you marketing. kidding me? I love that. Yeah. Cool. So, like, that's a big part of like what we're doing, and what I'm trying to teach people is that helped me come out of my comfort zone, and that's a domino effect. Trish, yeah. Trish, Diane Williams says Trish is marketing her business while she's having a therapy session. <laughs> <laughs> You know Diane. <laughs> Diane's in New York City. You know, shout out to Diane real quick. I absolutely love her. She is completely phenomenal. And uh, she's in she's in New York City and I love New York. I need to come up and visit you, Diane. I am. I'm having a little therapy session. Love talk you guys. Out, talk it out. So yeah. I was thinking what would be kind of fun. So people often ask, you know, each of us, you know, let's let's go do copy somewhere. But I'm like, I was just thinking as you're talking, I'm like, why don't we just do copy over Facebook Live? Boom. And if people want to listen, they can instead of me going like Let's make it a yeah. little more interactive and let's just have yeah. the same conversation just on live yep. and maybe have an educational yeah. point. Yeah. For other people. <laughs> yeah. Stroking the beard. Uh, yep. <laughs> um, that's a good idea. What was that one live? Did you, you do like coffee with, coffee with closers? Coffee Ooh. With closers. Coffee, coffee is for closers. Trade market, right now. Boom. Coffee, 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 coffee with, with closers. closers. Very yeah, nice. Write it down. Yeah. Get, to, get the patent Jeremy's office on the, on, the phone, on the phone real quick. <laughs> Holy jeez, I love what it. Was that? Oh, Blab. Do you guys remember Blab? No. No. Do you remember, do you remember Blab? I don't. That was, Blab was really Is that cool. Is something on Nickelodeon? It was like, <laughs> it was like. I can just see like slime coming down. No, it was all live and it was like four squares. No, it was no. totally cool. Some of the audience sure know was. what I was talking about with Blab. It was, really <laughs> yeah, was that an was app that, that like it, didn't make it? Like yes, yes. Oh, like, okay. like 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 yeah, Periscope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. Mir <laughs> Meerkat. Meerkat. I loved I, I loved Everybody Meerkat. About Meerkat. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, though, going back on that, like, like Periscope literally started this whole trend though because yep. it was really yep. big before Facebook Live, and I did Periscopes. Mm -hmm. I did too. A long time ago, nobody freaking watched it because nobody's on Twitter. Yep. Yeah. They are, but I'm gonna do a scope. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so what kind of, uh, uh, tips and tricks would you kind of like to share with like some of the, the, uh, the watchers and listeners? Yeah. Give us the breakdown. Yeah. Okay. So I think a lot of people don't use live video enough because they don't realize the like ridiculous ways that we can repurpose them. Mm -hmm. So first and foremost, I'm going to tell you all for the love of God, when you're done doing a live video, first of all, when you go live and make sure that you're doing it public and that you're also posting it to your story. Okay. Yeah. So when you're done being live, go into your stories as soon as you're done. And in the upper right-hand corner of that story are three little white dots. If you click on those three little white dots, you can immediately save that video to your camera roll. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then what I do is I take that and I immediately go over to Instagram and I upload it to Instagram. Okay. Okay. And you can upload up to a, a one minute clip as a post. So what I'll do is I'll grab it and then I'll do a trim. Like I don't even go into iMovie or anything. I do it real, real raw. I put in the trim, a one minute clip of like okay. where I talked about something. Mm -hmm. And then I'll put some text in there or whatever, maybe put a little filter on it. Boom. Pop it onto Instagram because while I'm doing that, I make sure that my Instagram account is connected to my Facebook business page. For sure. Okay, so now I've just repurposed two and one, two mm -hmm. birds with one stone, right? Then when I'm done with that, I upload it to LinkedIn. Okay. And I make sure that I'm, I'm doing that whole bit with LinkedIn, right? And then that's, that's something that everybody's sleeping on right now. Big time. Is, is you have no idea, guys. LinkedIn, LinkedIn is, is a gold mine, fire you guys. Right now. Gold mine. So I make, say that has somebody who probably hasn't been on LinkedIn in about LinkedIn four months, all. but that's all I hear about. So do it, do it all the time. Like, seriously, I, I don't, I don't even post to LinkedIn as much as I should, quite mm -hmm. frankly, but 
Um, I definitely connect with a lot of people on LinkedIn and I'm having those conversations on LinkedIn. So yeah, so put it on LinkedIn, upload it to YouTube. If you want to cut it up, go into iMovie guys, there's free apps on your phone for the, like, just do it. Yep. If you don't have the time, go to Upwork, go to Fiverr, uh, put, don't put go some, to Fiverr, please go, go to Upwork, go to Upwork, <laughs> go to Upwork well, only. I hate, Fiverr. I hate, I just, no offense just Fiverr. Old, yeah. yeah. Sorry yeah. guys. <laughs> <laughs> But or ask around, like go into yeah. a couple of groups that you're in and say, hey, who knows how to do this? I'm willing to throw you this much money, mm-hmm. right? To a month and, and just have somebody do it for you. Just repurpose your stuff. Um, and then before, like before you go live, if you do it from your laptop, guys, go live natively from Facebook. And that way you can conduct polls real time. Like you can literally like conduct a survey. With, you with your, your phone or no? No, not, ah, not, not that I know never, of. I okay. don't know if, if, if it exists. I don't know about it yet. Okay. But for yeah, now, I've, do I've it from your laptop. A, I don't think I've done a live from my computer in a long time. Mm-mm. Yep. It's always more fun because yeah. everyone wants to see me out and about in the field at, you know, demo or, you know, uh, putting the floors in or painting the house, you know, stuff like that. They don't, they, they, you know, I'm not going to bring my laptop and carry it with me, mm-hmm. unfortunately. But. but you can also repurpose it into your story, and then you can conduct yeah. a poll on Instagram, and now they have the polls in That's Facebook, too, okay. Facebook stories. And you can say, hey, are you doing this? Mm-hmm. Hey, was this helpful to you? Okay. You know, hey, do you live in a two-story house? You know, do you live in a one-story house? Do you okay. live on a lake? Like, just there's to so, get them to start interacting with you. It's just crazy. It's yeah. just nuts, right? Okay. Yeah. So there's there's some some nuggets right there. What's okay. the, um, so we talked about it a little bit before. Benefits. Pros and cons going live versus recorded. Mm-hmm. I know one that I think makes a lot of sense is being able to track views. Mm-hmm. Uh, but maybe can you explain, is it okay to start with recorded or should people just go live and just let it roll and be authentic? Oh, dude, go on live is like people. So people love, they li- like that's a feedback that I get a lot from my audience is people love that I go live because I'm authentic. I'm mm-hmm. transparent as hell. Like I give it 100% of who I am. And I think people are starting to really dig that so much more with content is they want that raw unpolished content Mm -hmm. like it's it's real you're being real with people and you can have real-time conversations and go hey some people just go live like a lot of influencers just go live and they'll do like hashtag ama ask me anything okay right so you'll literally do that and then just say ask me any questions that you have about live video marketing repurposing boom hit me up ask me right or i'll say hey as you pop in tell me your industry and i'll give you a tip on exactly how you can use live video right now Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So that piece is really important. And then again, going live from your, from your laptop. Now you can conduct real time polls. Right. And then if you're having those conversations, um, especially from your business page, those are video views. If you get at least three seconds worth of a view, that's something that can be pixeled. You've got a custom audience. You can create lookalike audiences. And now you're having better conversions when you start running those ads. Mm-hmm. Trish, Trish, explain real quick uh, to the audience. What's, what's a lookalike audience? What are you talking about there? So for those people who don't know what a pixel is, the Facebook pixel, first of all, go into Facebook Blueprint and learn about this stuff, guys. It's free information for you. There are free courses that Facebook offers in Facebook Blueprint. The pixel itself is a paragraph of HTML code that tells you exactly all the analytics that are going on on your Facebook business page, okay? So you wanna make sure that you install that pixel first and foremost. Once you have video views on your business page, now you can go into like creating custom audiences, okay? So Facebook, Instagram, all these platforms are artificial intelligence, guys. If you already have video views of like say 300 people that watched a video, right? Now you can go in and you can tell Facebook, cool, I wanna create a custom audience of those people, right? So Facebook, cool, I'm gonna grab all those people and we're gonna make sure that we have a custom audience for you. And then you can go in and create a lookalike audience. So now Facebook's gonna take all the demographics of the people who have already watched that video, those 300 people, Mm -hmm. and they're gonna go out into Facebook land and they're gonna say, cool, we're gonna grab more people that that meet these same Mm -hmm. demographics and we're gonna create another audience for you. Okay. So it just makes sense to do this. It's, Very cool. It, yeah. Can you yeah. do more? Than, can you do it different? Like if they watch your video for like three minutes yes. or five minutes? Yeah. Okay. So so right now the brackets are, I think, 100% that I'm right about this. It's three <laughs> seconds, seven seconds, and then I think 10 seconds. And then it's 25%. 75% and 95%. Okay. Wow. Which is why I push so hard for people to just do five minute lives, because if you can get five minutes of video out there and it's solid content 
and you can get people that know it's a five minute live to watch 95% of that. How powerful of that is, mm-hmm. you know, like yeah. now you're pretty much guaranteed to have a really strong audience mm-hmm. based on that content. Yeah. They're going to buy from you. Or they're going to refer you to somebody, right? hundred percent. Yeah. I Absolutely. Mean, that's just a no brainer at that point. So let's talk about some of the pitfalls of, of Facebook live. Mm-hmm. Like what things should you not do? Um, you should not go live without some kind of title or description before sure. you press that live button. Like, like, <laughs> like it, you're, you're going to tank, like it, you will like, and, yeah. and it's a waste of your time quite frankly, because people are going to pop into a video. They don't know what you're talking about. So make sure that your content, you know, um, topics that do well are how to videos steps okay. to accomplish a goal videos, right. Or a rant. If I just say, Hey, quick rant, five minute rant. <laughs> Oh my God. People want to know what is Trish pissed about now. (laughs) Yeah. Right. So, but, but you get people in, you know, and again, like you could be a political thing. Mm -hmm. Some people want to talk about politics. Other people are like, nope, not going to have anything to do with that. Right. So, but if it's something that could be a polarizing conversation, then that could be good for your audience. Yeah. See, I recorded one the other day and I'm not sure I want to put it out there. Yeah. Cause I was like, not, I was kind of afraid to go Facebook live on it because it was literally calling out a realtor for the, uh, it was unbelievable. I'll give you the quick little backstory of it. She basically tried to tell me that the house was worth X. And she's like, well, there's a minimum, a minimum base price per square footer for houses in the neighborhood. I go, okay, I get it. It's $220 a square foot. She's like, yeah. I go, okay, so simple math is $220 a square foot times this 900 square foot house equals X. And she's like, well, there's a minimum base. I go, no, you just said that to me. So the house is only worth 190 or whatever it was after repair value. And she goes, no, no, it's 220. I go, the house next door sold for 280, but it's because it was way bigger. And it was just this huge thing. I'm like, base. I had to, I had to go back to her and go, I go, sweetie, basic arithmetic. I didn't say sweetie, sorry. I said, basic arithmetic tells me that this is that, and you're trying to tell me otherwise. And I was like, oh, you're killing me. But I know that would have gotten probably, probably some good interaction on that, but I'm a little afraid to. So Well, the property appraiser's office would have proved her wrong anyway, mm-hmm. so there, yeah. there you have it. Comps are comps, but, you know, <laughs> I know she's trying to do best by her client, but at the same time, it's like, bro, come on. Yeah. Hey, let's go. Yeah. So, so, um, so Trish, so just so everybody listening knows, Trish spoke at Gary V's Agent 2021. Right conference last was it last week or two weeks ago it was last week two weeks ago so the, the 17th it was january 17th okay was, so yeah. two weeks ago yeah tell us a little bit about that trish yeah. what was that like and oh, how are you feeling my god. tell us how you got in that spot oh my god okay so this is going to be proof is in the pudding right so showing up is huge guys like like i've like, like I told Jeremy, we were laughing. He's like, he goes, how many people said, oh, you got lucky because VaynerMedia okay. reached out to you. And I'm like, this oh, has nothing to do with luck, you guys. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Overnight success. Um, right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Overnight success took me two to years. Overnight like, success. like, are you kidding me? No. Um, I had, I, so I, I'd done a few speaking gigs in 2018, which was awesome. Um, my first speaking, like, like somebody reaching out to me and saying, Hey, will you speak at my event was February of 2018. And I, you know, obviously took that. I was like, okay, now I got to push out even more content. So I got really crazy with my content. And then um, October of 2018, I was asked to be a speaker at the Military Influencer Conference. Okay. Okay. Which was huge. There was over 500 people there. It was massive, right? I want to talk to you more about that after. Yeah. No, absolutely. So, So the reason why I'm telling you guys this is because I've been super consistent and I showed up and I keep going live and doing my thing. So then I hired a gal to go out there into a LinkedIn world and everywhere. And I told her, I'm like, I want you to get me paid speaking gigs. And she's like, cool. So she was, she threw a few things at me and I was like, nope, not a good fit, not a good fit, not a good fit. And then she's like, Hey, would you be interested in this? And I click on the link and I'm like, Holy shit. That's it. That's it. <laughs> yes. Go now. Go now. Go now. She's like, well, Why am I leaving? She's like, well, I already submitted you for it. And then literally like two minutes later, I get an email from them to me and her saying we have scheduled the call to meet with Trish Bam. for like tomorrow. Good for you, Trish. And That's awesome. And I, I literally I was like I was shaking. I was mm-hmm. shaking. And so I called in and I'm on the phone with with Vayner Media and the Vayner Experience. Kim Garcia herself, mm-hmm. who is a phenomenal lady, absolute badass. So shout out to Kim. And I got on the phone with them, not even 10 minutes into it. She's like, okay, we'd like to invite you to be a part of the mortgage panel at Agent 2021 as a speaker. And and I, I literally started laughing. I'm like, 
are you, you're serious, right? <laughs> she's like, yeah, we're serious. And I'm like, you're not messing with my emotions right now. And she's like, no, we, we absolutely want you there. I'm like, this is phenomenal. I like started crying because oh, Gary V awesome. guys, Dude, like Gary, Gary V. v. <clears throat> like over three years. More crying folks. <laughs> oh yeah. No, I'm a crier. I don't care. You cried on that live, didn't you? When you started I, oh thanking everybody. Are you kidding me? I was shaking. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. I was like, it. oh boy, this is getting intense. Yeah, so it was awesome. So yeah, so that's that's how it happened. We 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 asked, mm -hmm. we applied. We yeah. we like you guys, you have to ask for this stuff. Like apply for this stuff. Yeah. So yeah. First thing that happens, they say no, right? And it was a exactly. phenomenal experience. Yeah. It, it absolutely was. Um, yeah, go ahead. No, I was just saying that's that's you have to you have to take action. You can't yeah. just sit around and wait for shit to happen, or you're gonna sit around and do nothing all day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know? it was nuts. It was at the Miami Gardens, um, in 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 the where the Miami Dolphins play at Hard Rock right. Stadium. Yeah. It was absolutely intense. We were there was there, all the breakout sessions were inside in the club level, and I sat on stage with um four incredible gentlemen, um John Downs. Um, uh, oh God. Okay. Hold on. I'm, I'm getting nervous now. Just thinking about it. John Downs, <laughs> he was the moderator. And then there was, um, uh, Jeff Zimfer and then, uh, Todd Bookspan. Ooh, I'm getting this. And then directly to the left of me, these guys are all like high level mortgage guys. And then directly to the left of me was, um, Jeff Nicholson, who is the chief media officer for Vayner media. Badass. Dude, I was like, he, I, we, we all, before we got a stage, we're like, we're just going to let Jeff talk and listen to every word he says, <laughs> right? And he, like, he dropped it like, oh, yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, totally agree with you on that. What he said. <laughs> <laughs> but it was awesome. And it yeah. was, uh, there were, I got it. I want to say there were probably about 100 people in that mm, room okay. for that breakout. And mm -hmm. uh, there were over 1,000 people from different industries there. Yeah. Sure. And I think what's what's really cool, and and I think we we probably do a good job of it here, is a lot of people would get really scared and overthink accepting or saying yes. So sometimes like when we I got invited <laughs> to speak on a panel and it's like, you're going to be in front of X amount of investors talking yes. about something that I know stuff about, but of course I don't know everything about. Yep. And so too many people will overthink and not commit to it. And, and what I've kind of learned is just say yes. And you have the team there. You have people around you. You can't do everything on your own, but there's people that want to support you that you can reach out to and prepare for something like that. I know it didn't happen with you, but a lot of people would possibly be in your, in that, kind of shoe where they're like, oh man, like I'm going to be on stage at this big event. And there's yeah, all these people ready. and it's like, yeah, I'm not ready. But, and, but the thing is like, if you're not ready, it's okay. Go do it and tell people straight up. Hey, that's not my area of expertise. I can't answer that for you. But if you give me till tomorrow, send me an email, I'll yep. find out the right person for you. Even if you're on stage in front of a thousand, 10,000 people, that's not my expertise. That's okay. But I'm an expert right. in this. Yep. Right. So uh, if, if anybody out there is looking for public speaking or speakers, I'll do anything you ask me to do. I don't give a shit. I'll go do, I'll speak in front of anybody because I want to get my message out there and I want to, you know, just, I want to practice my, 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 uh, um, my skill set, you know, and get better at it. I Absolutely. spoke at one of those TB Rias in St. Pete probably about two God, years ago. I might have more you know? than that, buddy. Yeah, maybe <laughs> three years ago. And I didn't know. It was um, it was your buddy, uh, Mike. Yeah. And he was like, yo, you got to come to one of these, all this stuff. And, and I was like, okay, cool. And then he's fine. He's like, hey, listen, you should come and be part of this one this weekend or whenever it was. I was mm -hmm. like, all right, neat. Dude, I went to it and I got there and I was like, you know, they book, they check you in, right? And I go, what's your name? I go, Jeremy Griffin. And they go, oh yeah, you're the speaker tonight. It's good to meet you. I go, really? <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was just coming to hang out. They go, yeah. I go, what am I speaking on? She goes, what? I go, pick a topic. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. let's yeah. go. Yeah. No, to listen, totally. I mean, I don't know everything that there is to know. No. Seriously, like you're not gonna. Like I don't know everything that there is to know about the mortgage industry. I don't know, and I've been doing it for over 18 years. Mm -hmm. Are you kidding me? Pro procedures and guidelines and investor compliance stuff changes like the wind blows. Right. Like, exactly. I don't know changes everything. Quicker than the Facebook algorithm. Right? Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. Like I don't know everything about it, but uh, I know me some live video. Mm -hmm. I know how to help people market and I know how to help people increase confidence. Awesome. Like that's, that's my will. Trish, you got some questions. You want to go through a few questions yeah. that you've taken on your phone yeah. here that we can so, answer? Yeah, we had some people reach out to us uh, yeah. uh, prior to this, you know, we knew that they were, uh, we were having Trish on. So we want to have some, uh, questions answered real quick. So go yeah. Ahead. yeah, yeah, no, no, for sure. So, um, for those of you who don't follow me on the Facebook, <laughs> Um, the Facebook. I've been, I, so my business coach <laughs> challenged me to, um, to do 10 days of Facebook live tips, like written content. He's like, okay, we know that you're great at being live, but what about, you know, the, you know, what, whatever, 33% of your audience that 
consumes content a little bit better with the written word, right? right. So I, I, I took, I, t- I said, challenge accepted. And so <laughs> yesterday, um, I actually don't even have to scroll to it. Yesterday, I had a gal that, um, that commented on my day nine. Today's going to be my day 10. I, I'm not quite sure. I, I really go, do it on a whim. Um, but she commented on it and she asked me about, you know, what live video versus pre recorded. And I know that you just asked me about this, but I think that it's really important that we understand pre recorded video is great, but something that one of my students in my, in my program was telling me and he messaged me yesterday. He's like, do you know what, how much live video has helped me with my confidence? Mm -hmm. He, when I I watched him progress, he was practicing going live in my group in the, in the private coaching group over and over and over again. And I watched him go from like super timid and a lot of ums, a lot of ums to like going, like practicing, practicing. I could coach him, right? And then he would go live on his personal page. And now like he's like 13 X his, his revenue or his investment in my course anyway, he 13 X in like two weeks. It's crazy. And then he messaged me two days it's actually, ago. It's not crazy. And he <laughs> goes, he goes, Trisha goes, I just sat down with a group of people to pitch them my, my, my offering. And he goes, I felt so much more confident because of the live videos that I've been doing. Mm-hmm. So pre-recorded is great guys. Like it really is. And I believe in it as well, but pre-recorded, like you can stop, you can go over again and over again and over again. But if you use live video and you practice this over and over again, now when I do sit in for even, even for me, it's allowed me to gain confidence in my business. I can sit here and intelligently speak to you guys about this because I've done it. Mm-hmm. So that's really one of my biggest answers to, to that question is I, I really recommend that, you know, for those of you who you think that you might be confident, but then you get in front of people and you clam up, you get nervous. I don't do that anymore. Like, right. I don't, I don't even care. I'm like, bring it. What you got? Exactly. So <laughs> one of the things we do over at Outfast is we give, um, we'd record one uh, pre-recorded video mm-hmm. for our agents because they, and they all get clammed up just about doing one where we're going to chop it up and edit it and they freak out. I was like, how the hell do you think you're going to be able to get in front of a seller or a buyer and sell yourself if you can't even do it to a blank canvas of a camera? Yeah. How are you going to not clam up or get nervous if you can't even do that with just me in the room mm-hmm. and I'm here helping you direct you to make sure that your, your pre-recorded type video is good to go. Right. And because we want them to get out there and be uncomfortable and then be able to do Facebook lives in front of new listings or houses. They just put under contract with their buyers to generate leads for themselves. So we are a real estate podcast. So talk about wh- what things realtors can do uh, or investors mm-hmm. in f- with Facebook live to generate revenue for themselves and leads. So I think that like a lot of people, get confused on the difference between buying a house that's possibly in foreclosure and like a new build. Right. So I think that we can talk about like the pros and cons of buying a a foreclosed upon property versus a not foreclosed upon property or, or a new build. Right. So some people you go in there and for a property investor, if you did a Facebook live walking through a house where like things are falling apart to a property investor, that's eye candy. Mm -hmm. Right. They're like, Oh, water lines are busted. That's a no brainer. I got a guy for that. Mm -hmm. Right. So they'll buy that house for 150 K that would otherwise be maybe 300 K they'll flip it. And now they're, they're pocketing what a hundred, hundred fifty thousand dollars, like no problem, right? So, but we don't know that unless you walk through that and give us that full visual, right? Mm-hmm. What's wrong with this house versus a new build, right? You know how many people don't know what warranties are included in a new build mm-hmm. and what's transferable, right? Right? Like you buy a new build house that that's an AC unit. I bought my house. I was seven months pregnant with my daughter. <laughs> uh, that was the end of May. Okay, August rolled around the week before I had my daughter, our a- entire AC unit oh, broke. Brutal. $8,000, we had to buy a brand new AC unit. <laughs> Boom, gone, <laughs> done, right? But these are the types of things, guys, this is what people wanna know when they're going mm-hmm. to buy a house. Cause literally I get people text messaging me and I'm not even a real estate agent. Mm-hmm. I get friends sure. and family texting me going, okay, what are some things I need to know about? Yep. Like right? One thing I love with the new construction is like always hire a third party inspector. A hundred percent. No brainer. Oh Even- Absolutely. Because people don't know, like <clears throat> if the, if the lender doesn't, if the program doesn't require it, like FHA is going to require you get an inspection, but a VA loan won't. Right. VA loan's only going to require us to get a termite inspection. Really? <sighs> yeah. Right. hundred percent. But you get a hundred percent financing on a VA right, loan. Right. Who qualifies for a VA loan? 
Dear real estate agents, for the love of God, reach out to your collaborative partners that are lenders and get them on a Facebook Live to start educating our veterans for the love of God. You heard this it is it me right getting here. fired up. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there's, there you go. I mean, if they want leads, that's how they get leads. Yeah. 100% educate people. Mm-hmm. So, so one, one thing I'm kind of curious about, you just touched on briefly before, was like LinkedIn, and I don't do a good enough job on there. Does that allow for any... Do they have a live program on that? Or how are you kind of like coaching people on the LinkedIn space? Cause, and how does that differ from what you would do on Facebook and what you would do on LinkedIn? Should you be transparent and do kind of the same thing? Different audience, maybe more professional environment. What is your, what are maybe some thoughts on the LinkedIn approach? So a couple pieces. Um, I, I do not consider myself to be a LinkedIn expert, but I can give you guys some advice on what I do. Okay. So I definitely want to disclose that because there are definitely some LinkedIn experts out there. Um, who you should totally follow. One of them is a guy by the name of Jeff J. Hunter. He's awesome. He's on LinkedIn. He's not a real estate guy, but he knows LinkedIn really, really well, and he gives a lot of like great tips. Another guy's name is uh, James Smiley. James Smiley is really strong on LinkedIn. Okay. Um, but my, my advice to you is this. People call LinkedIn Facebook in a suit. Okay. Um, what I like to do is, like I said, I like you hey, can't – Did you say Facebook in a Facebook suit? Facebook in a suit. Okay. Um, guys, there are a lot of really heavy-hitting companies like – there's a lot of money on LinkedIn, people who are like ready and willing to hire you for your expertise. So do not hesitate to start marketing yourself on LinkedIn. Um, Use a lot of hashtags that are relevant for your, for your market. Okay. Um, If you are a veteran, then use a veteran hashtag, right? Cause you want to, veterans want to work with veterans. That's something I've definitely learned for myself. Um, and you can, you can post up to a 10 minute video onto LinkedIn. Really? You can do it natively from LinkedIn and it looks like it's a live video, but it's actually not live. It records. I don't, I personally don't foresee LinkedIn opening up the live feature anytime soon. I think that they like to kind of police that platform to keep it cleaner Mm -hmm. from people like spamming and being gross and disgusting. Um, and and uh, just making like that connection get real, real the, nasty. The opposite of Twitter. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, sure. seriously, the opposite of Twitter. Um, so yeah, so that's why again with the five minute lives, if you do a good live and it's strong and the content like blows up, blows it out of the water, you get a lot of engagement. People are asking questions or reaching out to you. That's probably a solid indicator you should upload it to LinkedIn, right? I know we're gonna. You're still good? Yeah, okay. Still okay. 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 Got okay. It. Uh, so yeah. So I mean, so that's that's going to be my indicator. Make sure you have a strong call to action, mm-hmm. and you know, reach out to people and say, hey, you know, it would mean it would mean a lot to me if you could share this out. Um, Absolutely. The connections, the yeah. algorithm on LinkedIn is phenomenal. Okay. So yeah. We need yeah. To really get on it. Yeah. <laughs> get on it. Seriously. Okay. Well, we got to wrap this thing up. It's been an awesome podcast so far. <laughs> Trish, wow. how do people get a hold of you if they want to like learn more about the five minute uh, life? So if you go to my, my website, trishlito.com, you can download my free blueprint, five okay. minute lives blueprint. So within that blueprint, I give you the structure for doing a five minute live. You can print it out, have fun with it. And then also included is 10 ways to repurpose your lives. Awesome. Um, I also have a, um, a group coaching program right now. It's currently in beta. It's 500 bucks, actually 497. Um, so if you're interested in getting into that and learning how to five X your investment, then you could definitely do that. Reach out to me or you can email me Trish at Trish And I'm happy to hop on a call with you. Awesome. awesome. Very Beautiful. Cool. Sweet deal. I, this is, this is, a, this is an awesome Very podcast. Nice. This is <laughs> really good. Thank you so much for coming Thank on. Thank you. Hope you guys enjoyed today's podcast. If you guys liked what you saw, like what you heard, make sure you like, share, comment, and tell everybody you know. Make sure you subscribe on iTunes and follow us on Spotify and all those other places as well that you can find the podcast. We hope to see you on the next episode. Peace.